In this question, we have an ionic compound, magnesium bromide, and our goal is to figure out the formula for the ionic compound. So we need to figure out how many ions of magnesium and how many ions of bromine are needed for one formula unit of magnesium bromide. Our first step to figuring that out is having a look in our periodic table and figuring out what are the charges on one magnesium ion and one bromine ion. So let's go and have a look at our periodic table. So we're looking to find magnesium. Here's magnesium over on the left. We can see magnesium is in group two. And so we have a shortcut, which is that things in group two will form a two plus ion. The other way to think about it is that it's in group two, which means it has two valence electrons. It has to lose two valence electrons to form its ion and losing two negatively charged things leads to a positive charge of two plus or plus two. So that's magnesium. Our other ion was bromine, which is down on the right here. And bromine is in group 17 here. And our shortcut tells us that that means it has a one minus charge. The other way to think of it is that bromine is in group 17, so it has seven valence electrons. In order to achieve the octet rule, it needs to gain one electron. Electrons are negatively charged. When you gain something negative, you become more negative. So bromine has a one minus or minus one charge. Magnesium has a two plus or plus two charge. Okay, so let's fill that in here. So magnesium was two plus or positive two. It tells you here positive numbers do not need a positive sign. So we can just put two there for magnesium. Then for bromine, it was minus one. We do need to enter a negative sign before negative numbers. So for bromine, the charge was minus one. Okay, so we know the charges of each ion. Now our goal is that overall in our ionic compound, the total charge that's positive and the total charge that's negative will be equal so that the overall charge of our ionic compound is zero. So we want to have a net charge equal to zero in our ionic compound. So right now we have magnesium, which has a positive two charge. And we have bromine, which has a negative one charge. So right now, if we had two plus and one minus, overall we'd still have a net charge of plus one because we've got two positives, one negative, overall that gives us one positive. So in order to balance that out, if I add one more bromine, now I've got one magnesium with a two plus charge, two bromines with a one minus charge, so my total positive charge is two plus, my total negative charge is two minus, and overall, if we do positive two minus two, that gets us zero. So this is the correct ratio for us to have a net charge of zero. So we can fill that out. The number of ions in the compound, we decided we need one magnesium ion and we need two bromine ions. So overall, the total charge of the magnesium in the compound, we've got a charge of positive two and just one iron, so two times one, that gets us two. For bromine, we have a charge of negative one, we have two ions, so two times negative one, that's negative two, and then we can just do our check to make sure everything in this row here should add up to give us zero, because those are the total charge of each ion in the compound. Two minus two equals zero, yes. So that's great, we've got a net charge of zero in our compound. So our last step is to figure out our formula. This tells us how many of each ion we have in one formula unit of the ionic compound. We've already figured out we have one magnesium ion and two bromine ions. So we want the Mg with a one. You can see there isn't one that has a number one. That's because when it's one, we just don't include the number because it's obvious there's just one of it. So we have Mg, magnesium, and then two bromine. So that's gonna be the Br2. 
So remember, our goal here is to make an overall charge of zero in our compound. So we have to figure out how many of each ion do we need to make sure they balance out to give us zero. In this question, we have an ion at compound again. This time it's calcium phosphide. We're going to follow through the same steps to figure out our uh, formula for this ionic compound. So step one is to go to our periodic table and find the charge of one ion for calcium and phosphorus. So calcium is over here. And we can see calcium is in group two. That means calcium is going to have a two plus charge when it forms an ion. Over here, we've got phosphorus. And we can see phosphorus is in group 15. And being in group 15 tells us that it's going to form a three minus ion when it becomes an ion according to the octet rule. So we've got two plus on calcium and three minus on phosphorus. So let's put them in our table. So calcium was positive two. Phosphorus was negative three. And remember, you only need a negative sign for negative numbers. You can't enter a positive sign for positive numbers. We're just gonna assume that those are positive. So again, let's draw those out. So we've got calcium two plus, and we've got phosphorus three minus. And again, we're hoping to get an overall net charge equal to zero. Right now, we have two plus and three minus. So overall, we have a charge of negative one. So this isn't balanced. Since the charge overall is negative, let's add some more of the positive thing to try and balance that out. So let's add another calcium. Now we have a charge of four plus for calcium and three minus for potassium. Now we've got too much positive. So let's add another negative, let's add another potassium and see what we've got. So now we've got a charge of four plus on the calcium and six minus on the potassium. So now we've swung back the other way, we've got too much negative. Let's add one more of our positive thing. Okay, so now we've got one, two, three, four, five, six positive on our calciums and one, two, three, four, five, six negative on our potassiums. Oh, sorry, on our phosph... So now we've got six positive on our calciums and six negative on our phosphorus. So let's go ahead and draw this out again. So we've got our calcium two plus iron and a phosphorus three minus iron. And remember our goal is to have a net charge or an overall charge, which is equal to zero. So right now we've got two positive, three negative. We've got more negative than positive. So I'm gonna add another calcium to add some more positive to try and balance that out. Okay, let's do another check. Now we've got one, two, three, four positive on our calciums and three negative on our phosphorus. Now we've got too much positive, so let's add another phosphorus to add some more negative. So now let's check, we've got one, two, three, four positive on our calciums, one, two, three, four, five, six negative on our phosphorus. So we still have too much negative again. So let's go back and add some more of our positively charged calcium. And let's do a check. We've got one, two, three, four, five, six positive on the calcium ions and one, two, three, four, five, six negative on our phosphorus ions. Okay, perfect, we've got six positive and six negative. So let's go ahead and fill that in in our table. How many calcium ions did we have? We've got three calcium ions. How many phosphorus ions did we have? We need two phosphorus ions. And let's just do our check to find the total charge of each. So calcium, we have a charge of positive two and we have three of those ions. So three times two gets us six for our charge overall on the calciums. For the phosphorus, our charge is negative three and we had two of those ions. 
So negative three times two, that gets us a charge of negative six overall on our phosphorus ions. And now we can just do our check because everything in this total charge column should add up to give us zero. So we've got positive six minus six. Yes, that gives us zero. So we know that we've overall got a net charge of zero in our compound. Wonderful, so last step is choosing the formula. Calcium, we have three of those, so it's gonna be Ca3. And then phosphorus, we have two of those, so it's gonna be P2. And just as a reminder, we always have the metal first and then the non-metal when we're writing both names and formulas of ionic compounds.